It's episode 594 of the Locked on Texas Rangers podcast. On today's show, I'm about talking about how great Martin Perez has been. Also, Cole Calhoun, finally figuring it out. All that and more about this wild weekend of Rangers baseball. Let's get into it. You are Locked on Rangers. Your daily Texas Rangers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On the Texas Rangers. I'm your host, Bryce Patrick, a cripplingly addicted Texas Rangers fan since 2010, here to bring you through the highs and lows of every weird and wonderful Rangers moment. Thank you all so much for making Locked on Rangers your first listen of the day. If you're not already, go ahead and follow me on Twitter at Bryce Patrick. Follow the show at Locked on Rangers and subscribe on YouTube where we are blowing. We have blown past 800. We are heading well on our way towards the goal of 1,000 subscribers by the All-Star break. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing. I really appreciate every single one of y'all on this Monday May 16th, the Rangers are 14 and 19, fourth in the American League West, heading into a wildly difficult next couple of weeks. It's this this week is going to be tough. It's it's going to be real tough, and the next week is going to be also pretty darn tough. I'm gonna get into what has happened this weekend. I didn't even talk about Thursday's game because I didn't talk about that on Friday's episode because there's some stuff that we need to mention. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has to cover the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. This is a wild Sunday of DFW sports. The Rangers won. The Dallas Wings won. The Mavs dominated in their Game 7. Go check out the Locked on Mavs podcast. They were um, very happy today and nearly completed it with a perfect day of Dallas sports, but the Stars ended up losing their Game 7. Shout out to Dane Lewis and the Locked on Stars podcast as well. But the Rangers had themselves a really good day after what was a really rough first couple of games against Boston. I talked with Lauren of Locked on Red Sox on Friday's episode. We talked about what was going on with the Red Sox, their offense really not figuring out except for their, you know, top three guys. Nobody was really hitting. And she talked about how bad the bullpen was. And, well, everybody else kind of figured out how to hit. And the bullpen kind of figured out how to pitch. And Nick Pavetta stopped being bad and looked fantastic against the Rangers this weekend. Um, but I want to get into Thursday's game. Taylor Hearn had a fantastic performance. Probably his best of the season. The Rangers won 3-1. to one. Looking like they were heading into this weekend where they might continue their winning streak and against a Boston team who had been struggling. Um, outside of Taylor Hearn, there wasn't a whole lot going on. He only allowed one hit in his five innings of work. Looked really solid. Struck out five. Did walk three. So again, that command wasn't exactly where you wanted it. But overall, he was pretty efficient with his pitches. Was able to get through a lot of guys. A great leadoff day for Brad Miller. Had his fifth home run of the season. A multi-hit game. Also got on base another time by walking offensively. There wasn't much else going on in this one. Uh, Rangers bullpen held up pretty nicely. Uh, Brock Burke worked another couple of shutout innings. Matt Bush came on, looked great. Joe Barlow saved number six. Bing, bang, boom. Rangers head in the weekend. All right, let's see what's going on on Friday. The Rangers come in. They finally have their red uniforms. Finally. It's about freaking time. They also have the powder blues on Sunday. I'm just, I'm so happy. I mean, the Rangers got their teeth kicked in while wearing those red uniforms. But they looked really good while doing it. Also, something worth noting, that stupid Trucker TX hat. The stupid logo, I don't know if y'all feel as strongly about it as I do. Clearly, I feel very strongly about it in my burning passion and hatred of it. Thank you to Levi Weaver, who has also helped me lead the crusade against that stupid TX, as opposed to just the big old T on there with the stupid state logo. It's back to the regular T. It looks good. It was, there was nothing wrong with it. There was no need to mess with it. The Rangers messed with it anyway. It was fine. Uh, yeah, Nick Pavetta looked really good in this one. Dane Dunning got kind of roughed up. This one did, was able to go five and two-thirds innings. Again, it's nice seeing this rotation go deeper into games. They're kind of at that point where like, all right, this feels like this feels like normal. They feel like they they should be, and things are looking good. A three-hit game from Cole Calhoun, including his first triple of the season, which came off Nick Pavetta. And, uh, yeah, there wasn't a whole lot else going on in this one. Garrett Richards looked meh. Friday was just, uh, yeah, it wasn't good. It, it was not good. Alex Verdugo looked like he was turning it around. Multi-hit game from J.D. Martinez, Andrew Bogarts. Like, 
this Red Sox team is really good, and they are much better than their record indicates. And, uh, yeah, of course they're figuring it out when they come to Texas to play the Rangers. Of course, they couldn't wait one more weekend. Couldn't wait, like, you know, until Monday, figure it out on Monday. Would have been nice. Would have been really nice. But, you know, it's fine. Move on to Saturday, which was, again, another absolute stinker. Glenn Otto got just completely shellacked. The difference between him with when he's on with his command and when he's off is startling. But again, who else are you going to call up at this point? There's, he's really he's doing fine. He's doing a fine job. Like it's not great. I still think long term he's a reliever, probably a long reliever, because he's just he's just not quite there. That's okay. That's fine. There is a role for him. The rest of that Jimmy Gallo trade is looking good. By the way, shout out to Ezekiel Duran, who who raised his OPS a hundred points in one day on Sunday. A four hit game with a walk two doubles and two home runs and finished it off with a sack fly five runs five runs runs batted in it's pretty pretty darn good day Zeke Duran looked really great and the rest of the Frisco offense looked really great as well I'm going to talk more about what Frisco has been doing on probably tomorrow's episode whenever I record with Grant Schiller I'm going to have him on this week at some point we'll figure out when that is but other than that Saturday was just real rough Glenn Otto has been fine he's fine AJ Lexi is not there Spencer Howard is not ready um you know, nobody else in AAA is really ready, so he's just kind of, you know, bang the brunt of being the fifth starter, going out there every fifth game and looking fine to bad to sometimes maybe good. And you know what? That's okay. There's some value in that right now. Like, it's fine. You don't have to freak out about the Rangers number five rotation. We knew this rotation was going to be a problem. And so far, it's actually been much better than expected, which is surprising everybody. But, I mean... The rest of this game was was not great. The Red Sox offense, again, looked fantastic. Rich Hill conf- continues to confound Father Time. He's 42 years old, still pitching super effectively. Uh, it's very frustrating. I would have liked him. That would have been fine. Doesn't make sense, but, you know, good on him. A lot of multi-hit, a lot, a lot of extra base hits for this Red Sox team. A multi-hit game from Devers and Martinez. Bogarts looks really good. Like, this whole lineup was just really stinking good. Like, it's just very frustrating. A fourth double of the season for Jonah Heim. Cole Calhoun, again, another, another extra base hit. Had one off of a lefty. Rich Hill, solid. Solid stuff. Ranged for 2 for 11 with runners in scoring position. Not great. They had base runners. They had one walk and seven hits. Like they had, they had guys on base, but they just could not do a darn thing with it. But Eli White continues to look like a valuable major league player. A couple of steals in this game. He had seven on the season at that point. Still second and third base. The guy is just stupid fast and making some great plays, including on Sunday. I'll talk a little bit more about Sunday's game coming up. But yeah, these Friday and Saturday games were absolute stinkers. Uh, and I'm, I'm hoping the Rangers can just, you know, live, laugh, love, and, and forget about it, whatever the, the actual terminology is there, because this was a rough Friday and Saturday. But Sunday, Sunday's when things all turned around. I'm going to get into another great start from Martin Perez, a little bit more about Cole Calhoun, finally figuring out how to absolutely smack baseballs yet again. But first, this episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet online is the number one spot for all of your sports betting information. You can find out the latest odds, news, and sports developments, including this year's basketball playoffs. You know, you can go take your bets on the Mavs in the Western Conference Finals if you want to bet on them to go make the finals. I'm sure they have lines up for that. They have some lines for, you know, NHL playoffs if you want to bet on, you know, the other Rangers, the Ice Rangers. Congrats to the um, the Cold Rangers for winning their Game 7 and, and doing some nice things over there. Uh, shouts out to the other Locked On Rangers podcast. So you can head to the website today, use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online. It's where the game starts. And thank you all so much for making Locked On Rangers your first listen every single day. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts, taking fans through the season like no other network. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Now, Sunday's game didn't start off great. It really didn't. It was a bullpen game for the Red Sox. I was giving Lauren a lot of crap because she said how bad that (laughs) the Red Sox bullpen was, and this is bullpen day. You know, Davis came out in the first couple innings and looked great. He did walk a batter. Um, Then Tanner Houck came in, and he allowed... The Rangers were no hit through the first four innings, and then in the fifth inning, in comes Cole Calhoun. Boom, bing, bang, boom. Man hits his home run. Rangers are not being no hit. They had just given up a run in the top of the fifth inning. The only run that Martin Perez 
would allow in his six innings of four he struck out seven walked to five hits worked around quite a few of those base runners and has been just absolutely fantastic like I mean, we all know that Martin Perez has been great this year, but but how good? He is among the best pitchers in the American League, period. He's just outside the top 10 American League Baseball Reference War at 1.0. He's sixth in ERA at 2.01. He's sixth in ERA plus with at 185, and he's fifth in fielding independent pitching at 2.43. The guy has been an absolute menace. He had a rough you know basically first outing but since then he has been absolutely nails just straight up nails in all of his games for the Rangers and they have needed him to be that good in all of these starts he only has one earned run or fewer since April 23rd he only has two starts where he has more than one earned run he had three earned runs in his first game against Colorado in four innings he had uh, three earned runs four runs total against the Angels on April 17th. But since then, he also had that weird, you know, four runs, but only one of them was earned in his last start in Kansas City before this one against Boston, um, or excuse me, against Kansas City, not in Kansas City. But he's been fantastic. He's been absolutely fantastic for the Rangers. Everything they have needed him to do, he has done. He has gone away on his journey to find himself, become his own man, come back to Texas, and be the best version of himself. It has been so inspiring to see him come back and, and do that. His expected numbers are fantastic. You know, nobody's barreling him up. His expected ERA is in the top 15% of baseball, like expected batting average in the top quarter of baseball. He's not walking anybody. He doesn't have to be fast. His curveball is not anywhere crazy. His fastball spins crazy low because, again, sinker. Like, this guy has been everything the Rangers could have imagined for him and more. And I am just so happy that the Rangers freaking got him. I also forget that he's 31 years old. I always think of him as like 33 or 34 because he came up so early, so early in his career. He was 21 years old when he made his debut back in 2012. I was still in high school then. Well, yeah, the very beginning. If he, yeah, very beginning of the season. I was still in high school. So this this guy has been here for a long time. This is his 11th major league season. He is finally coming into his own. You know, lefties take a while to mature. There was a lot of pressure put on this guy to be a lot of different things, to be the next Johan Santana, the next, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, some Cy Young. And, and you know, he, he wasn't. He wasn't. And, you know, that's fine. He took three years, the last three years, to go to Minnesota, to Boston, add a cutter, figure out not to throw four seamers that much, and he has come back as the best version of himself. All the worries and concerns that we'd had in the past about, you know, him, you know, having one outing, one little bad inning and letting it spiral and that completely derailing an otherwise great outing. He has not done that yet this year. Maybe he'll do that in a game or two, and that's fine. But, like, overall, he is just so much more confident in himself coming back here to a place where he knows where he grew up, where he was raised, and, you know, he just gets to be his own man, redefine who he is. And I think that's very helpful for him to not have to be, to, to be able to go on that, you know, journey for the last three years and go be somewhere else where he doesn't have all that history of like what you had to be and what we expected you to be and, and all this nonsense. He could just come back and, you know, he wasn't even expected to be the number one starter and he's kind of fallen into that role because he has been so dang good this year, even though John Gray is the highest paid pitcher on this roster. I think Martin Perez is like third, maybe fourth, maybe fourth, depending on how much uh, Jose Leclerc and Garrett Richards make this year. Also kind of insane to me that Garrett Richards is making more than Martin Perez this year, but that's a whole other thing. But again, Martin Perez has been a godsend for this Texas Rangers rotation, and uh, I cannot be any happier for him because <laughs> the Rangers have needed every bit of him. Rangers bullpen, by the way, again, has been was fantastic in this one. They pitched three innings, did not allow a single run, only allowed a couple of base runners, just a couple of hits, and a walk. Matt Bush went one inning of scoreless baseball. His ERA is down to 338, and he struck out a pair. And he was sitting 98-99. He, he has been fantastic. His, his fastball was sitting more, you know, in the kind of mid-90s range of the, like, 95 to 96. At this point, it is averaging 97 miles an hour which is super duper impressive when you couple that with the fact that he has got one of the best spin rates in all of baseball on his fastball 98th percentile he's at the top 2% of all of baseball in his spin rate his fastball velocity 
this is kind of insane, the, the state of baseball right now. He's just outside the top quarter of baseball in terms of fastball velocity. But his average fl- fastball is 97 miles an hour. That's how many people are throwing harder than 97 miles an hour. Like, you average 97 and you're not in the top quarter of baseball in, in fastball velocity? That's absolutely insane. But... His fastball has been fantastic. He's throwing a cutter a whole lot more, which is more his like fast slider. He's got his his, his actual slider they listed as throwing only two pitches, which is around averaging eighty five miles an hour. But the cutter, which is basically it's basically the same pitch as his slider. It's just a little bit faster. He's throwing that, you know, about thirty two percent of the time. Fastball, again, about half the time. Curveball throwing that a little bit more than he has in years past, and it is working out pretty well at this point. He has been really good at his expected numbers, his strikeout rate, he's not walking anybody, his chase rates, you know, fine, curveballs, fine, whiff rate, pretty darn good. Like, it's it's nice to see him doing this at age 36, and, you know, he is a little bit older, and, again, he did have those years where he spent completely out of baseball because of his many off-the-field issues that, uh, thankfully, he has worked through, and he's also had a couple of different injuries, which have been a little concerning, I didn't think that you know, he'd be able to come back and be anywhere near this. I mean, the Rangers signed him just on a minor league deal this year. He missed two full years of baseball with some of those elbow injuries. He didn't pitch at all 2019 or 2020. He barely pitched at all last year, only threw 69 pitches, which is nice, but also at the same time, very much not nice. He hadn't really made an impact, you know, at a major level since 2018. And he's coming back and doing this. It is extremely valuable for this Rangers bullpen, which has been really stinking good. And you know who else has been really good is, of course, Cole Calhoun. I'm going to get into that a little bit and a look ahead at this Angels team that the Rangers have a series with coming up. But first, this episode is brought to you by Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar on the market. They just sent me some new Built Bar birthday cake puffs. They are absolutely fantastic. You know, imagine dipping your finger into a plastic tub of birthday cake frosting and then opening your eyes and realizing that it was only 150 calories and 16 grams of protein. That's what it's like to eat one of the birthday cake puffs from Built. I just received my built my birthday cake puff package. They are fantastic. Been having them for breakfast. You know, I feel a little decadent starting my morning off like that. But you know, they're so stinking good. If you haven't tried the puffs, you know, I'll let you in on a little secret because that's what friends do. A chocolate covered marshmallow protein bar. Yeah, you heard me. Delicious flavored marshmallow covered in 100% real chocolate. You can make every day your birthday with Built's birthday cake puffs. Built Bar has taken the delicious experience of biting into a fresh protein bar and birthday cake and made it into a protein bar covered in 100% white chocolate and added sprinkles. So if you like them, you want to go try them out, go to built.com, get a birthday cake puff now. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCK15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. Again, thank you all so much for making Lockdown Rangers your first listen every single day. We'll be back more episodes this week. Hopefully going to try and get six to get back on track for my averaging five this week feeling a little bit better after my horrible sickness the last couple weeks has kept me a little bit on the downside voice still sounds a little bit raspy might get a little bit asmr for the rest of this week but you know we live with it we power through it and we do what we can but cole calhoun is speaking of powering through it cole calhoun has been absolutely on fire the last seven games the man has been fantastic i have slandered him quite a bit And I felt I was justified in doing so. I was also mad about the other Calhoun and his situation blowing up, which I still feel right in doing so. But for the last seven games, Cole Calhoun has been by far the Rangers' best hitter. He has been fantastic. And I think it's, I'm not going to say it's all because of my slander, but I'm not going to say it's not at least partially because of it. Last seven games, 23 at-bats. He has nine hits, two home runs, two walks, seven strikeouts, a slash line of 391, 440, and 783. The guy has been absolutely on fire. He was trying to do a little bit too much with his launch angle early on in the season, and it just was not working for him. The Rangers hitting staff is like, all right, maybe don't try and go too hard into the launch angle stuff, and it has paid dividends. He has been incredibly hot. He is, again, playing pretty confident to pretty good above average defense in right field that has got some value. And Adoles Garcia also had a multi-home run game on Sunday. I haven't talked too much about the Sunday game, but the Rangers absolutely blew it wide open in that fifth in that sixth inning the Rangers tied it up with a solo shot from Cole Calhoun in the fifth inning but the sixth inning is where the Rangers really piled it on and did all of their damage and it was started by none other by none other than 
Marcus Simeon legging out a double. Eli White was called out on strikes to start the inning. Marcus Simeon worked a 2-2 fastball, just smoked it down the left field line. I thought it would be a little bit close for him to get there into second, and I was like, all right, well, I guess you're you're trying something. You're going for it. He's in the top 10% of sprint speed, so he's among the fastest in baseball. We know he's got those raw tools, and he legs it out, slides in, gracefully, perfectly, into second base. His seven doubles, I'm pretty darn sure, still lead the Texas Rangers uh, at the major league level. Corey Seager was able to work a walk on four pitches, excuse me, five pitches. Jonah Heim, not a super great at bat, was working it as best he could, but again, struck out on a foul, foul tip in three pitches. That's fine because Adoles Garcia comes in. The second pitch that he sees, he absolutely smacks it smacks it to the opposite field for a three-run home run to give the Rangers all the runs that they would possibly need. Then in comes Cole Calhoun, also on the second pitch of his at-bat. Absolutely smacks a home run, his first multi-home run game since 2020. Cole Calhoun, that is. First time the Rangers have had multiple teammates have multi-home run games since 2017 when it was Robinson Chirinos and Joey Gallo. Of course, you all knew that, most definitely, because Adoles Garcia had another opposite field home run later on in the game in the eighth inning off of Danish. Not the crisp, the actual, or the uh, pastry, but the actual um, pitcher, Tyler Danish, for the Red Sox. But again, this is a great offensive outing. Like seeing more dingers from this team really need their offense to step up because it just hasn't been good. It hasn't been good. And the first month of the season, there was a lot, I mean, I guess preseason, all of that nonsense, there was a lot of hype brought in with Tim Hires, the former Red Sox hitting coach, and um, and the new bench coach, who is the new offensive uh, philosophy guy in Donnie Ecker from the Giants. There was a lot of hype around these guys, and justifiably so. They had been around the best offenses in baseball. They had their fingerprints all over them. There were a lot of things they improved, a lot of guys whose careers looked like they were not quite there um, or pretty much over. A lot of washed guys they they brought out of the wash and made into the incredible hitters they used to be in San Francisco. That's why the, the Giants had the best record in all of baseball last year, 109 wins. In case you forgot that, it's because they were the best offense in baseball. And the Rangers got the guy who was the brains behind that offense, brought them here to Texas, brought the guy who helped the Red Sox, who, again, not that they needed a whole lot of help because they already had a bunch of really great hitters, but you still got to keep those guys going right. And Tim Hires had done that for several years with the Red Sox. And so they brought those guys in and the offense stunk for the first month. I was critical of it and it's still not quite there. There's still a lot of guys that need to be fixed, but you know, one guy at a time. You can only fix one guy at a time. Adoles Garcia has looked much improved. Again, the numbers aren't quite amazing right there, but the walk rate is up. He's still hitting the ball as hard as anybody in baseball. We know his raw power is absolutely insane. And if he can get that walk rate, continue to get that up and not chase nearly as much. Adoles has still been amazing against fastballs. He has not been nearly as great against sliders. Last year, he was great against fastballs and sliders, which you know are the two most common pitches in baseball. If you can only pick two to dominate, those are the ones that you would pick. This year, he's done a little much better against off-speed stuff. The changeup that got him, um, the changeups and, and you know splitters and things like that that gave him a little bit of trouble last year. He's done better against those. He's walked a whole lot more. He's not been as crazy, crazy aggressive in expanding the strike zone. But still has some ways to go. But again, the raw tools are just off the charts outstanding as we saw how great the raw power is and the raw power is to you know, all parts of the outfield. Also, some great defense by him in this one, showing that even if he is striking out at a crazy rate and not getting on base at a crazy rate, the raw power, the arm strength, the defense are all fantastic. Also, I want to give another shout out to Eli White, who led off in this one and has been pretty great offensively for the Rangers and providing a pretty decent bit of value defensively as well at every single outfield position. Made a really great play to snag a ball in foul territory in left while playing in left field. The guy has been monumental. Well, yeah, monumental sounds like a bit much, but he's it, been very important to this Texas Rangers team and providing value in basically one of those last roster spots for guys. And I got to give him credit. Credit where credit is due. He has been on base in each of the last three games. He's been on base four, yeah, four total times in the last three games that he has played in, including a couple of those against Boston and one against Kansas City. 
I was critical of the Rangers keeping him on because I didn't really see the value in him. They kept saying that this guy can hit and whatever. And so far, like his offense has been pretty solid. His on base is at 370 when you're one of the fastest players in baseball. That'll freaking play. His slugging is at 368. Would like to see him hit the ball a little bit harder. Again, you know, it's kind of nitpicking at this point, but I do love that Adolis Garcia has been fantastic and how my Cole, Cole, Cole Calhoun slander might have propelled him into becoming the version of him that the Rangers very much hoped they were getting. Again, he's the reason why Leody is not called up yet because, you know, the Rangers basically had to cut bait and on one of their everyday guys at this point, and I don't think that they're quite ready to do that in, you know, Adolis Garcia or Cole Cajon, or not not cut bait, but like cut down on their plate appearances. Not so much with Adolis, but it was mainly just Cole Calhoun. Because if the Rangers called up Leoti, they wanted him in an everyday role. So that would mean Cole Calhoun would probably, you know, be more of a platoon guy. The Rangers keep whatever platoon they're doing in left field, move Adolis to right field, and put Leoti in center, where his defense is super duper valuable and super duper good. But the Rangers weren't ready to do that. Cole Calhoun does have a major league track record. And again, it's been it's been real rough sledding for every single, pretty much every offensive player in baseball, except those among the top. I'm going to look into a little bit more later on this week how some of the best hitters in baseball are still putting up their outstanding numbers and you know a little bit of concerns that I might start to have for the Rangers' top two paid guys in Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager and wanting to see more out of them. But let's look a little bit very quickly at this Angels team that the Rangers is going are going to be facing off against this week in a three-game series, and then they'll have a four-game series in Houston at the weekend. On Tuesday's, uh, on Monday's game, I should say, the Rangers have John Gray versus Thor, Noah Syndergaard. Um, on Tuesday, they have Reed Detmertz, who is coming off a no-hitter very recently against Taylor Hearn. We'll see how that goes. Dane Dunning versus Shohei Otani on Wednesday. It's going to be some pretty darn good pitching matchups for the Texas Rangers. The Angels right now are still in first place, I believe, at 24 and 13. If not, they're right there neck and neck with the Houston Astros. I think they might be tied record-wise-ish or like win percentage. The Astros are 23 and 12. While the Ast- while the Angels are 24 and 13. So, you know, one more win and one more loss for them. Mike Trout has been <laughs> he's been Mike Trout. He's been freaking Mike Trout. He's going to be incredible. He's got an OPS just under 1100. He's batting 312 with an on-base over 430, slugging over 670. He already has 9 home runs. Taylor Ward has an OPS that leads the team. The team that has Shohei Otani and Mike Trout. You know, remember how Shohei Otani's bat was on life support? He was doing like CPR on it. Yeah, um he's got 8 home runs. He's got 8 home runs since then. His OPS is nearly up to 800 after it being, like, I think below 600 at that point. Taylor Ward has been one of the best hitters in all of friggin' baseball. Eight home runs, a 1247 OPS. Yeah, uh, pretty darn incredible. The rest of the lineup has been, you know, fine. Brandon Marsh has been, you know, fine. Uh, Anthony Rendon, fine. Everybody else, fine. But those three guys in Mike Trout, Taylor Ward, and Shohei Otani have been among the best in baseball. And their pitching has been... Fantastic as well. Patrick Sandoval has been excellent. Shohei Otani as a pitcher, excellent. Noah Syndergaard, excellent as well. Reed Detmers and Michael Lorenzen have been, you know, pretty fine to solid to above average. So the Rangers have themselves a difficult next couple weeks. They have two different series against the Angels. They're playing in Houston this weekend, and Houston just has not been able to stop winning since they played the Rangers. Good going, Rangers, getting them going. Um, Not fun wish that they had not gotten them going and wish the Astros would stop winning. Also, not going to feel great about the Rangers knocking the Angels off of first place in the division, but I'll feel better if the Rangers are winning and I won't complain, even if that does mean that the Astros are on top until this weekend when hopefully the Rangers can go in and sweep the Astros four games in Houston. I, I don't know that that's going to happen necessarily, but you know, anything is possible with, with Luka Doncic proving that anything in DFW sports is possible Maybe even the Rangers turning out a winning week in what will be a very, very difficult, but hopefully very fun week of baseball. Cole Calhoun's on track. Next up is Marcus Simeon. Then we'll get everybody back, and and maybe Nathaniel Lowe will remember how to hit as well. 
But that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on Rangers. Thank you all so much for making us your first listen every day. Now for your next listen, make it Locked on MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully. He brings you his unique perspective on the Major League's past and present. Happy belated 50th birthday to Sully, who celebrated this weekend turning the big 5-0. Shout out to Sully. Go listen to his podcast. It's free and available wherever you get your podcast. Thank you all so much for listening and subscribing and checking out all of this great stuff this week. And have another great week of Locked On Rangers content for you coming up. Thank you all so much for listening. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball.